So Spark is dependent on Java. So first of all, what we'll do, we'll just check to make sure that Java is installed. And if it's not installed, then we'll install it. So we'll just check the version. Okay, so there is no um, installation of Java, so we'll just go ahead and install it. And we'll start off with the uh, JRE, and that's going to be version 11. And the JRE is the Java runtime environment. Okay, and also what we'll do in addition to that, we'll install the JDK. Okay, we'll just do another check to make sure it's installed. And there we have it, 11.0.5. Okay, so for the next, but what we'll need to do is download the Spark library. And for that, we need to go to the Sparpatchy website. So I'll just put in download or patchy Spark. So I'm going to select 2.4.4 and click on the download Spark link. And I can just simply download from this link. So 290 megabytes, that will take a while. The file that's downloaded is a TGZ file, so I'll need to um, uh, uncompress that file. So what I'll do, I'll do that from the command line in the terminal. And first I'll just go into the downloads folder. And here you can see it. And so I'll now uncompress it.
and we can see that it's created a uh, folder with Spark uncompressed and I'll just move that over to um, into the local folder so my command will be sudo So what I'll do, I'll just so what I'll do, I'll just move this folder over to um, somewhere a little bit more permanent. So I'll put that into use local. So I'll just now move that folder over to somewhere more permanent, other than the downloads folder. And that will go into user local spark. And that's now moved and now what I can do I can get rid of the zip file or TGZ file okay so that's now cleaned up and the spark application is now moved over to where it should be so if I were to just um, do a change of directory Now see that we have moved it over to um, the local, so we can now go into that folder. Because we want to use Spark with Python, then what we need to do is just check what version of Python we're using and just create that in our environment variable. So I'll just do a, uh, where is Python 3? Or what I could do is do a CD user bin, and then let's take a look at what version of Python we're using. So just scroll up. Okay, so what we're using is Python 3.7. And what we'll do, we'll add that to our environment variable. So we'll do a uh, sudo, and I use vim. I'm on a Mac, so um, I always have to remember how you do the tilde character. So it's um, Control F6, I think. No, sorry, F Fn F6. There you go. And what we'll do is we'll just add the environment path to the bottom of this file.
we haven't yet installed it, but what we'll do, we'll add the path for the PySpark library. Okay, I think that looks good. Just have a little double check of that. So I think that's okay and that should work. Just do a right quit. And now what we can do, we can reload that bash RC file. And then what we can do is just check to make sure that our environment for Spark works. So we'll do an echo Spark underscore home. And then we've got it, use a local Spark. Okay, so next we need to install PySpark. And PySpark is a driver that allows Python to communicate with Spark. So uh, we'll install that through pip3. Um, pip using version 2 of Python, but I'm using 3. So we'll just do a sudo pip3 install pi spark. And if you didn't have pip3 installed, then you, you'd have to install it. And to install pip3, it would be a sudo apt get install python3 pip and then yes prompt. Um, and then if it were version 2, then it would just be without the 3. Okay, so now what we can do, we can just go into the Spark library. And then we can just validate that everything is working okay by accessing both the shell for Spark, um, using the Spark shell as well as the Python shell. And then we'll go into the bin file, or directory, I mean. Okay, so you can see that there are various um, ways in which you can open shell. And the two which we're going to be looking at is PySpark, which is this one, and then also Spark shell. So what we have to do is just say Spark shell. Should come up in a bit. Okay, there you go. So that's working. And so we have the Scala uh, prompt. And then to quit that, you just do a Control D. And then the next one, which we can check, is Spark. Okay, so now we have um, the shell for the Python, or let's say the PySpark library, driver, and so that's now working. So we can start We can also go into our web browser, so we can Check the server running Spark. Okay, 
and there we have it. So we have a working version of Spark. And the next thing that we can check is PySpark. And we'll just control D to come out of that. And we'll just type in PySpark. PySpark. And we also have the Python prompt. So everything is working in both um, the Spark shell using Scala and also Python. And just control D to come out of that. And that's it.